Hey, what's up everybody? How you doing tonight? Hello, hello! Hey, what's up? Uh, let's see, we've got, uh, we got a few people already chatting. Uh, Runar, hello, Runar is alive, good to see you, good to see you. Uh, Sado Sarong, uh, welcome. Uh, first of all, I wanna sit and watch, but quick question, is this gonna be spoilery to a person who hasn't finished Final Fantasy 16? Uh, so, we're gonna do our very best to avoid spoilers in this. I like to talk about things as they happen in the game. Uh, while I have uh, played through the game and, and like really po uh, combed over all, a lot of it, um, we're going to try to keep it contained to what we're actually talking about here. Now, in the chat, we're going to really try to bring that down. So uh, that's going to be uh, good as well. Uh, hey, Lee and Kristen, what's going on? You're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Vikrid, hey, hey, new to the live stream, but your first session was your workday entertainment today. Yeah, that's what we love to hear. Uh, working hard or hardly working, you know? Uh, hopefully with some good background noise for you. Uh, but I am so glad that you... I got to, to uh, watch Tuesdays. So um, if you are new to the stream tonight, um, there's a couple things that I wanna kinda say. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Wade, I'm Professor Noctis. Um, <laughs> maybe a little bit of both, relatable. You know, I, I can't tell you the number of times that I've watched streams or listened to streams while I was doing grading, which uh, depending on the stream, it uh, works, uh, works well or not for, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for the, the students I'm grading. If the stream is bad, oh man, uh, Fs all the way around. Are theology to topics okay like the ones we talked? Uh, are theology topics okay? Uh, yeah, uh, theology topics are always okay on, on my stream. So um, a couple of pieces um, that I should say right off the, the bat. Um, like I said, I'm Professor Noctis. I am an actual professor at the University of Alabama. I teach a number of classes, but my favorite classes are based on my dissertation where I combine religious studies or uh, literature and video games. I did my dissertation on Final Fantasy 15 and how to teach Judeo-Christian kingship or uh, Christian and Jewish kingship narratives through Final Fantasy 15. And so um, playing Final Fantasy 16, I was like, I bet that there are some interesting things that we could talk about as well. So this is actually not a college class yet, but um, you are all helping me make the pitch for it by your engagement. And so this is a, hopefully gonna be an active stream. So yes, theology topics are okay. Um, I do have a few things because religion and theology are a, a sensitive topic for a lot of people. Um, we are respectful. Uh, this is a classroom setting, and so every perspective is going to be held here. Um, we're, we're not going to be antagonistic uh, to other people's thoughts and all that kind of stuff, but um, you should know that I come from a uh, Christian background. I'm, I'm particularly interested in um, Christian theology and Jewish um, theology and the mythologies that inform both of those traditions. I know some about ancient, ancient Near Eastern uh, mythologies and cultures, and I know some about Eastern and Norse and Greek and Roman and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of a need-to-know basis on those things, but my primary interests are in practical theology um, rooted in Christianity, Judaism, um, some uh, thoughts like Hinduism, Buddhism, and, and things like that, but we're going to kind of touch on a, a lot of that stuff tonight. So yes, theology topics are okay, and let me also say, um, you as a chat help inform this stream. So your questions, your comments, your interests, all that kind of stuff, uh, we're going to play off of that a little bit um, as well. So uh, that's a little bit about me. Um, how are you doing tonight? Are you good? I appreciate so much that you would hop in on a Thursday night um, to, to hang out and to talk video games and theology, all that kind of stuff. So hey, thanks for the follow, Liam. Thank you so much for the to follow Leanne. Um, really, really appreciate it. Um, but I hope you're doing well. Uh, tonight we're gonna we're gonna have some fun. Y'all have had a long day of teaching and uh, meetings and all that kind of stuff, so it's just good to be with you. Also, I gotta say I'm sporting my Roll Tide gear. I'm, I'm looking at myself in the camera here. You can't exactly see it, but we've got a big game this weekend. Uh, it is. Uh, it is the uh, Bama Texas game, and so everybody's coming into town this weekend for the game. Um, 
Alabama versus the University of Texas. ESPN Game Day is going to be here. Uh, SC, uh, SEC Nation is going to be here. We've got Barstool. They're going to be here, and it's going to be a, a madhouse. I'm planning on going to uh, uh, to Game Day myself, and maybe if you watch ESPN on Saturday morning, you'll see me with a sign. I'll try to throw out something about Final Fantasy 15 or 16. Um, anyway. Um, I'm still waiting for Bama weather to get cooler. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? What a terrible time. It's so hot. And uh, uh, as an Aggie, this is the one week I root for Bama. Roll tide to that. Roll tide to that. We really, really appreciate that. So it's good stuff. Okay, well, let's, let's dive in, uh, shall we? Where we last left off. Um, we played through the prologue last time, and I left everybody with um, some basic questions. Some basic questions. Um, and uh, we talked about a few things. I want to actually show some of the slides to get us thinking about uh, this stuff. Uh, in fact, it's kind of covering up my face, isn't it? That's annoying. Let's see if we can fix that real quick. Do, 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 do. That's not it. How about this one? Nope. How about this one? Nope. This is a professional stream, you guys. I don't know if you knew that. We're very professional here. <laughs> uh, what if we just move it right? Oh, there we go. I think this is going to work. Ah, oh, look at that. No, the stream is not ending. That's a lie. That is, that is a lie. Don't listen to this. Wow, with the follow. With the follow as I am struggling for my life over here. Look at you. Yes. Okay. We've done it. We've done it. Um, okay. So when we last left off, I left with some basic questions, some questions to consider. We talked about what an icon is and what a dominant is. And so the way that these streams are set up is I spend a little bit of time in the intro talking about, um, talking about uh, some of the, the theology or some of the lecture components. Then we're going to play the game. We may stop along the way to, to stop and deep dive into some things. And then we do a wrap up at the end. And that is the basic flow of our, our lecture stream. So to get us started, last time we met, we talked about uh, some of these things. Uh, let's see here. We talked about these ideas of icons and dominance. And I wanted to bring this up really quickly. There we go. Let's see if we can go. Yeah, there we go. So this idea of icons and dominance. So there's a there's a um, author named Karen Armstrong who leans into this idea of religion um, and philosophy of religion, history of religion, really really deeply. And here's one of the things that she says. She says that an icon uh, is an image particularly of the divine. And so I'm going to do a quick refresher here. She says in her book, uh, The Case for God, uh, which is kind of a compendium of all of these different thoughts that have gone into modern day religion. So it includes Ju uh, uh, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, um, the Abrahamic religions, and then any other kinds of thoughts. But here's what she says. She says in the, the Bible, Scripture told us that we had been made in God's image, and it was therefore possible to find an icon within ourselves, like any platonic image, that yearned towards its archetype, essentially, that there are uh, note, uh, notes of the image of God that cause a person to reach out for those things of God. Then she says, if we looked within, we would discover a triad in our minds and the faculties of memory, of understanding and will or love. Um, and this would give us an insight into this triune life of God. Now, this is incredibly important for understanding Final Fantasy 16, and here's why. It is my thesis that each of the icons or these gods that we see in Final Fantasy 16 and their corresponding dominant, who is the person who's essentially the priest that can become or summon this presence of, of the divine, each one of these is going to have an embodiment of a different attribute of uh, God in various religions. Now, one of the questions that I have asked uh, you to consider for tonight and, and really for every stream is this. With each icon and dominant that we meet in this game, what is being said about the divine, first of all? 
and not just the divine in the game, but what would be said about the divine in our real world? So you may be familiar with Greek or Roman mythology. What about these icons uh, would be um, an attribute of one of those? Um, in Christianity, in, um, in uh, Hinduism, in, um, in uh, really any uh, sort of story that, that's a myth or a mythos, as we'll get into about the divine. So what attributes are being conveyed? Number two, what's being said about humanity? And finally, what's being said about the world? Tonight, we're going to meet a dominant who is embodying some of those things. We're gonna, I'm really excited to get into that tonight. Okay, so before we get going, are there any questions? Anything you want me to kind of clarify? Because uh, we're, we're gonna get started here with the game in just a second. There we go, there's our save screen. All of our different saves. All right, well, without further ado, let's get going, how about it? Hey, what's up, Highwind? Just the uh, recap of the last lecture. So you're good. You're good. We just started. Professionalism! Welcome back. Sorry. What's our situation? Let's just say Shiva and Titan's little spat hasn't made things any easier. And? It's as you thought. The Crusaders have sounded the retreat. Then we follow. We're down a man, Sergeant. If we return without Shiva's head, our fate will be no different from Beast's. I'll take my chances with the Iron Blood. At least then I might die fighting. Ooh. After you do, that is. I won't be dying. Not today. Then it's settled. No dying. Now, if you don't mind... Alexander, what's going chase. on? Good evening, Sir Wade. Reporting for duty. Hope you're doing great tonight. Um, thanks for hopping in, Alexander. Great How to, do they expect us to, to kill something How you doing tonight? Do this? They don't. Only the girl holding its leash. So one interesting thing about this part that we can talk about briefly is that... Um, these groups or these guys are called uh, the bastards. Uh, they, uh, these four, are essentially slaves who are um, who are tasked with um, capturing the dominant, or at least killing the dominant. Um, and the dominant is the dominant of um, the icon Shiva. And so uh, we'll meet. Um, the dominant of Shiva tonight. Uh, one of the things that I love about this is that all of its members, including its leader Tiamat, are bearers. Now, all four of these guys, uh, you've got Tiamat, uh, Avis, or Evis, I, I guess, um, and then you've got Beast, and then you've got Wyvern. All of these are uh, four different dragons, but Tiamat particularly is interesting because in um, Babylonian ancient Near Eastern tradition, Tiamat um, was... Um, Part of um, the, the creation of the world. In fact, in a, in a battle, Tiamat's body is actually um, taken and, and uh, forms the mountains and all of that uh, kind of stuff, the landscape of the world. So really interesting stuff there, um, but I, that's just an interesting callback. wonder if there's any relation to the Inglorious Bastards. I wonder. You could, might be able to make that sort of thing. Okay, so I wanted to say that real quick. Now let's get to it. Just as a reminder, we are playing over on hard mode, which means I may die. Um, Shiva. Shiva! What's up, Hoven? Hoven is uh, referencing uh, Resident Evil 5. If you've ever played that, the female protagonist's name is Sheva. 
Um, All the old trails and you can just gone. yell, Sheva, Sheva. It'll be hell finding a way out. Taking a do break from static studies. Will fare any better? You know what? I typically don't do this, but for your sake tonight, I am going to um, play with um, subtitles on. Uh, just because I know that sometimes it gets a little frustrating because I'm going to talk over some things. Uh, let's see. Where are we? Subtitles. I never play with subtitles, but this is how much I love you, chat. Don't ever say I didn't do anything for you. This is for you because I can't shut up. Uh, let's see. Good. Takes a, taking a break from static studies. Uh, bless you, Alexander. All right. Wow, that takes me back. Uh, Hoven, I'm good. Got an assigned an entire book for homework. Godspeed, my friend. Godspeed. Good thing you're hanging out in chat tonight, huh? By the flames. One thing that's going to be um, interesting or maybe a little frustrating, I guess, story-wise, is that um, I have in-game abilities. That's not really a spoiler, but um, it does kind of take the immersion out of it a little bit. A palate cleanser. Can I jump down? Yeah, we can. Ooh, look at that blood. Is it spoilers to say why they are specific to their group? Um, so, I don't think so, but if you would like to... Um, they can't you can because uh yeah what are you thinking alexander go, go ahead and say it did you hear that down there so titan has knocked the fight out of our iron blood friends where are the rest of them that can't be the main host wait King Pat, our fortunes have turned, Sergeant. It's her. The Dominant? Are you certain? The Crystalline Orthodox is a backwards faith for a backwards people. Ooh. In the Iron Kingdom, they teach that Dominants are unclean aberrations born of blackest sin. Boy, that's a that's a loaded statement, isn't it? Um, in the Iron Kingdom, and that's that's the uh, group that we are witnessing here. Um, they teach that dominants are unclean aberrations born of blackest sin. Now they're using a ton of different. Um, they use a ton of different vocabulary words here. That if you're not familiar with Final Fantasy 16, it's gonna feel a little bit um, foreign to to you, I guess. So the idea of bearers. For example, um, are are those that are born with the um, they're able to bear magic. They have magical qualities, and, and a lot of times they are going to be able to um, to to utilize some of the elements of the icons, even though they themselves are not dominants. Okay, um, so it's really interesting that the, in the Iron Kingdom, because of their religion, their uh, religious faith, they believe that these are aberrations. Okay, they are false. Um, uh, perceptions or, or false characterizations of uh, this. So that's uh, of the uh, icon, which is really interesting. I kind of want to say the similarities between dominance and avatars in H Hinduism, but as Christian, I could relate this to God the Son. Yeah, both of those traditions are going to really talk about this a little bit, right? Um, so in Hinduism, you've got this idea of avatars and the, um, this idea of, of um, the dominant representing the divine. And as Christians, um, there's this idea of God the Son. Jesus is uh, in some ways representative of the representation. I think Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 says that Jesus the Son is the radiance of the Father, right? Uh, and you're able to see the unseen God uh, because you've seen Jesus. Really an interesting piece there. So there's definitely some of that similarity with this idea of the dominance and the icons, right? That's that's so cool. Such an interesting representation. Uh, what are you buying? <laughs> Hoven, good. Them being bearers of high status lineage uh, in the empire. Yes. So that that's a, a really big thing. Bearers of high status lineage in the empire. Thank you, Alexander, for that. Uh, and we'll learn more about the empire a little bit later. Okay, let's get going. Uh, you'll have to indulge me a little bit as I uh, get excited every now and then. Only their priests are allowed to perform the rites of priming. And I see many. We end this quickly. Hey, let's do it. 
Defend our fathers. Oh. Crime where the girl dies. Ah! What alvation now came? Alad Scully asked. If you've no ice left in you, then steel will have to serve. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Y'all, it's been a minute since I have played this game, so I'm having to almost relearn it a little bit. Just because I've been playing Diablo 4 for weeks. Let's just get them all here. broken right now aren't they it is on final fantasy mode so i'm playing on new game plus i guess with uh final fantasy mode it's a little bit more difficult yeah i'm not doing any damage to her not responding to chat right now. I'm fighting for my life. Shiva. Shiva. Don't we love Zentatsuka? We love that. Oh, that was not what I wanted. Oh yeah, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. It's coming back to me, just like Celine Dion said it would. All coming back to me now. Oh, ow. Fucking icons. That did a chunk of damage. What's up, Toy Christopher? How you doing? Icon? We out here trying. She's not even fully primed. Oh, bless our. Oh, 
There we go, too slow. A little bit more, a little bit more. Ah! Hey, what's up, Red? Thank you for the lurk. I appreciate the... The lurk? Oh, gosh. So close. There we go. Lost. Got it. Okay, man, ton of chat over here. Let's let's see if we can uh, <laughs> respond really quick. Uh, I feel like we went to the same Christian school because they pull out the verse very well. I try, buddy. Uh, next, finding it out late game and replaying FF mode gave you clarity in the context and the TMS behavior. Yeah, remember that. We're gonna probably talk about that a little bit. Um, late i love that is this on final fantasy mode yes poor jill abilities are a bit broken this early yeah they are uh, but now you gain enough points to have all the icon ultimates for every attack true um no worries pal just keep on gaming that did a tiny chunk of damage man i feel bad for shiva's dominant uh ha that's a great one too and red thank you so much Okay, uh, everybody, if you, ha if you haven't followed the Well-Read Mage, uh, he's a uh, buddy of mine. We run uh, the-pixels.com together, um, the editor-in-chief, and he is the founder of that website. So go give him a follow. He's been playing Final Fantasy IV um, in his streams during the day. Okay, we got Flawless Frozen Tear, and as she fought, she shed tears of ice, which shattered on the blood-stained earth below. All right, everybody, let's do it. <sighs> Dead? I don't think so. Well, what are you waiting for? Oh. No, no, that's not you, not here. Oh. I'll bloody do it then. Oh, I forgot about that part. Ah! By the way, this is an M-rated game, everybody. Be warned. Fuck. Ah, thank you for following them, Leanne. We've got company, Wyvern. Get your ass over here and help me with these bastards. Uh, you do keep your swords. Um, I'm sorry, Jill. You do. Great game, but developers shouldn't have said no day one patch and then have one at launch and then say the story's finished. No DLC will be added, and then three months later announce two DLCs. What is wrong with you, Wyvern? Uh, I'll comment uh, on that in a second, Ketsukoto. Also, her. great name, Ketsukoto. Know her. Look around you. You can even animals care. I need you here. <laughs> Heck yeah, look at this. Let's see if this does it. Come on. Man. Woo! We love that. That was beautiful. Now that that's done. I won't ask you again, Wyvern. 
Take her head so we can be done with this. We'll see him. I... I can't. I won't. You would betray the Holy Empire? Betray? I don't recall ever pledging allegiance to your Emperor. My service may have been bought with this brand, but not my loyalty. Mm. I just fight to survive. That's right. And you think I don't? The Empire will have our heads if we return empty handed. So if you won't take hers, I'll have to take yours. Go, baby. I told you, Sergeant. I'm not dying here today. And neither is she. And neither is she. Let's find out. Sorry, Chad, I'll respond to you in a second if I'm not. Am I hitting him? Oh, no, I'm not. I missed him. <laughs> Keep hitting the lightning thing, dang it. Okay, let's go, baby. So Kate Sakoto, uh, first of all, awesome name. Uh, love that. Love the Aztec god uh, imagery there. Um, absolutely love it. Um, but to me, the game definitely felt complete when I finished it. Um, I've always had a name. So it doesn't bother me so much that they have um, two DLCs coming. Still clinging to the past like a torn blanket. But um, it depends on what they do. Now, if they do something that's going to make it feel like um, it could have been in there in the first place, then I don't know. Ah, I've got to stop doing lightning rods like that. Ah, oh, wrong way, buddy. For nothing. No one. Can we please and I will not target the right guy? You will, though. Ooh. Oh, he's big bad. Ah. FF15 DLC edition felt bad since, since they filled in obvious gaps. I feel satisfied with what I got out of the base FF16 though. Um I honestly don't want to beat the game due to DLC like FF15. I adored the game, but once I beat it, I never went back to play the Royal Edition edition editions. Uh, so, uh, Vicarid, um, you know what? Like the 15 DLC um, did fill in a lot of gaps um, for for me um, personally. Uh, I thought that the game felt complete on day one. The Royal Edition added a lot more, uh, but by honestly, with the base game day one of 15. I uh, was already teaching a class on it and I was writing a dissertation on it. And so like I was already kind of in the, the world. And so the DLC and the Royal Edition just kind of added even more for me to, to enjoy. So I, I didn't necessarily feel that, but I, I know that a lot of people were dissatisfied with it. Um, and Sado Sarong, I don't want to beat the game due to DLC. Yeah, so like um, I would encourage you to beat the game. Um, I think that that um, is a, a great... Um, it's a good example of like, yeah, 15 is like, may, maybe do wait for the Royal Edition if you if you can't. But for 16, this is a complete game. And I think that the way that they do this DLC is going to be important. Um, hopefully it's going to add peripheral things. Um, 
I, I, there are some specific characters that I hope that they delve into, but nothing that would be consequential to the whole game. And finally, Alexander says, and you'd think I don't. That small phrase was a blink and you'll miss it, foreshadowing the cycle of the lack of free will sustaining itself. Yeah, so this game has a lot to do with free will and some other things that we're definitely going to get into. I enjoyed f f uh, Base 15 too, don't get me wrong, but I'm also a mega FF fan. Uh, bro, you, you're talking... You talking to a mega FF fan, so you are welcome here. Okay, let's let's go. I'll try not to talk during all the cutscenes. I love this guy. And also Torgo. Ah. We love the dog. This way. Uh, Bloody wind. <laughs> well, come on then. the music that played when Jesus walked into the wedding at Cana. <laughs> I like it. Hugo dear, my proud desert lion. With that you had taken care when chasing the hare. I expected more from the mighty Titan. Put the Ice Queen on her back, no doubt. But you'll have to work harder if you're to claim this prize. My lady, the thunder. We'll be hearing more soon enough. What a Gather the men. We have work to do. Oh, gosh. I love to hate her. I love it. I see yeah. chat. Um, Is it really you? When we get a break, I'm going to talk to chat again. Who's this fine hound I see before me? A fine hound. A fine hound who saved your life. That's who. Torgal. Hey. His name is Torgal. Huh. You two acquainted. Well then, you won't mind taking him off my hands. Funny. I'd always pictured you as more of the chocobo type. Clive Rosfield. Come now. 
fleet as flame, fierce as a wildfire. That there was the blessing of the Phoenix. Hmm. I'd heard rumors that you'd survived, but I never paid them much heed. <laughs> Calm down. I didn't come all this way for your handsome mug. Now her, on the other hand, she seemed worth muddying my boots for. None the worse for wear. Still, might be best to get a second opinion. Back her up. Back her up. No. Ah! Not another step. <laughs> I mean it. Well, I'm not about to leave her here. Not one with a warm bed waiting. Mm. It's all right. Gosh, the voice actors are so stinking good. You're welcome to join us. You do want to help her, don't you? Uh, Sid, if we aren't back soon, none will have our heads. <laughs> I'll explain everything once we're back at the hideaway. Come on. What an introduction, right? <sighs> and Torgal, too. So good. All right, everybody, let's chat for a second. Um, and it strikes me that um, that y'all are not able to see one another's chats. Uh, if you are on Twitch and YouTube, you're not able to see one another. So uh, maybe we can fix that. I don't know, but we'll try. Uh, Anyway, let me uh, catch up on chat real quick. Um, so uh, about the topic of free will, uh, I got to wonder if that is why we really only get to play as Clive in a meta sense. You know what? Not a bad idea there. We can. Um, that's 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 an interesting take on that. Uh, and then uh, high wind, you say the goat talking about Sid. Man, Sid is this is my favorite Sid out of all the Final Fantasies. Uh, they, they do keep doing this. Um, Bring out the water to wine. Yeah, I don't know how uh, Final Fantasy keeps making their Sids to be the consistently coolest dudes. I love it. I also love that maybe it's now that I'm getting a little bit older, um, the Sids not only are amazing, but they're also a little bit older and a little bit wiser. And, you know, we love that. We, we absolutely love that. So that's that's great stuff. Um, next, uh, Kate's Kotal says, uh, Zidane? Uh, are you talking about Benedicta's haircut? <laughs> <laughs> over on YouTube, uh, saying, uh, saying that that's that's funny. He Zidane and Benedicta have a very similar haircut. I bet. I I think so. That's that's good. Um, I remember thinking Sid's voice was a little too deep, but I grew on it. Hoven, yeah, I agree. Um, Sid's voice uh, actor Ralph Innocent, he also plays um, Lorath in Diablo Four, so, and I just played. Uh, Diablo 4 immediately after I beat this game and that was one of those things that I was like oh my gosh Sid part two a much older Sid I guess but his voice is so distinctive um, I can't see him as anything other than Princess Peach thanks to the voice actor his y'all if you haven't followed Ralph Innocent on um, Twitter and seen his Princess Peach impersonation <laughs> it's so good in fact uh, Benedicta did Wario um, and uh, let's see um, Stuart Clark, who plays Dion, did a good Yoshi, and Ben Starr, uh, who does Clive, did Mario. It, it's been really funny over on Twitter, or X, as it's called now, I guess. Uh, let's see. Hoven says, baby girl goots. <laughs> yeah, fair. It's definitely a voice that commands a crowd. You're right, Runar. Uh, should I go live on YouTube? Uh, that's up to you. We do a multi-stream here on Twitch and YouTube, and so it's just different chats, um, as you can see. Um, on here and I can actually put that on the screen if you would prefer for me to have a chat up there so you can read um, on the screen what the people on YouTube and Twitch are saying that might be better so let, let me see if I can fix that in a second uh, let's see King Sid from Final Fantasy 9 has your love the bug oh 
Don't do Zidane like that. I'm older than Sid Highwind now, Vicred. Preach. <laughs> Same. Um, I always felt the reunion of Clive and Tor Torgal was too short until uh, the side quest toward the end. Yeah. Gav did Toad to yes. King St. Michael, hello, hello. I uh, hope you're doing amazing. And everyone, uh, I hope you're doing amazing. Michael, how the heck have you been? Um, it's been a minute. <laughs> Clive did do Mario, and Clive did a great Mario. Um, if you haven't seen that, go check out Ben Starr on Twitter and uh, look for his old Mario impersonation. It's good. I try to keep my, uh, my streams as most as I can uh, PG rated. <laughs> but that is not a PG sort of thing, but neither is this game. Uh, I can't do anything about the game being M rated, but <laughs> that's funny. Uh, let's see if I can get some of this stuff um, on here. Um, I've been surviving the heat in New York, LOL, but going amazing. Uh, Michael, I'm glad, I'm glad you're doing great. Um, I can't imagine the heat in New York, but I can tell you the heat in Bama is, uh, <laughs> it's something, it's something. Hey, let's talk for a minute about um, kind of the, the theme of the night, which we are trying to think of what are the attributes that we've seen in uh, various religions. And for my uh, sake, I, I think uh, predominantly about Judeo-Christian or Jewish, Hebrew and Christian, uh, Christian imagery. What are the attributes of the divine that we can see in these icons? Um, and if icon is essentially this idea of the image of God, a divine image that is in a person, how do the dominants convey that? And so um, we've met a few different dominants now. We've got Jill as Shiva. We've got um, Joshua is the Phoenix, Rip. Uh, we've got Benedicta that we don't really know too much about her yet. And then finally, we've just met Sid, who is the god um, or icon Rama. Rama. Um, so Rama, uh, in this game, uh, as you can already see, he is an icon of thunder. He's an icon of storms. And I think that that's really, really important. Um, storms have two different aspects to them um, in, in a lot of mythology. A god of storms is fierce and fearsome, one that strikes awe and commands lightning. You think in terms of like Zeus, you think in terms of Thor, you think um, in, in terms of storm gods that rule and reign with wisdom and um, kind of a, 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 a foresight of such. But you also see God of Storms, particularly in Hebrew and Mesopotamian and Babylonian mythology, as the one that is the God of fertility. Um, and I don't mean that in reproductive fertility alone, though sometimes that is the case. But fertility is in fertility of the land. So especially in the ancient Near East, because they are living in desert conditions, there's a lot of beseeching the gods, praying to the gods for what? For rain, right? For rain and for water. And so they would appeal to these gods of storms to quench the thirst of the, the land so that they could grow their crops and all that kind of stuff. So that's a really important thing for us to remember. Something about Sid as the dominant of the icon Rama is going to be catering to this idea of the, the God of Storms, who is both fearsome and awesome, and a, a provider of need. This is an important thing for us to move forward. And I want you to think about that element, right? Um, this, this element of Thunder God Sid, as I see in the chat from Quetzalcoatl. Um, yeah, the, the, uh, this idea of Thunder God Sid, um, Sidolphus Telamon, who is providing for others. Um, providing through others, uh, for others through uh, ferocity and also through maybe an element of compassion. Okay, uh, let's talk about this a little bit. How PG can you be with Benedict and Hugo almost doing the dirty 10 minutes in? Ain't that the truth? Benedicta, you bleep. Um, constant 90 plus days here in East Bama. <laughs> you are right. Over in Bama, it is hot. Uh, Kate's Kotal says, I love this Sid and Sevens, but let's not forget the Thunder God Sid from FF Tactics. He was the goat. I love Thunder God Sid. Um, I, I love him. Okay, let's uh, see what we can do with this. Sid's last name always strikes you as a Wheel of Time reference. Telemon, I, I am not actually familiar with, um, with the Wheel of Time series. Sell me on it. You're, you're not the first person that's referenced that to me, but I, I, it's a blind spot for me, so... Um, and while you are doing that, 
I'm going to try to set up a chat here on this screen for us. Uh, so give me just one second. Do, do, do. Isn't this a good uh, kind of mission crystal theme? It's really good, isn't it? Okay, we are looking for the chat box. We're going to find it. There it is. All right, so now we have a chat box up here. Um, we may need to move it, but we're gonna we're gonna try. I'm actually gonna make it a little bit smaller for us, so that I can just put it right down here, maybe. And we'll see. We'll just see what happens. Okay. And if I need to adapt it or amend it in any way, we will. Okay. Let's see. I uh, love the Sid. Sid's last name. Uh, you'll have a great time with the Wheel of Time. Okay. Benedicta's depiction is ironic. Garuda is, I believe, Indian mythology and known to be an enemy of snakes. Yet she's the chief spy of Walod. Um, deception and deceit. Eden snake acts, but calls Sid a snake. Alexander. Yes, that is poetic justice and it's beautiful. So tonight we're really going to be focusing on Sid. And next Tuesday in that stream, we're going to focus entirely on Benedicta. So I need that energy, Alexander, on Tuesday night because we're really diving in on Garuda and on Benedicta next time. I'm super excited about that one. Uh, Leanne says it's an epic high fantasy series that draws from the Bible, Arthur legend, Norse and Celtic. Oh my gosh, that sounds like exactly what I need. So yes, uh, I will do that. I don't need anything else on my to-do list, but you've given me that. So thank you. One of the characters in Wheel of Time is named Luz Theron Telamon. Whew, he was essentially the leader of the forces of light. So maybe fitting. Yeah, I love that. I love it. Telamon um, also comes from... Uh, let me Google it real quick. Uh, there is, I believe that he is the son of somebody in the Trojan War. Okay, let me let me Google it. Yeah, in Greek mythology, Telamon is the son of King uh, Aegis of Aegina. Uh, he's the elder brother of Peleus. Uh, Telamon uh, sailed alongside Jason and one of the Argonauts. Yep. Um, in the Iliad, he's the father of the Greek heroes, Ajax. Um, after killing his half-brother, Telamon, and Peleus fled and made their way to the island of Salamis. Okay. Okay. Kind of interesting stuff. Uh, yeah, so um, some Greco, -Rome, uh, Greco, or excuse me, Greek mythology history and stuff like that. That's kind of interesting. That's cool stuff. Yeah, love that. Um, that chat's a little small, isn't it? Can I make it wider? Would that work? Let's see if I can change the size of it a little bit. Uh, we can show platform icons. That'd be a good idea, I think. Like on the chat box. Browser settings, maybe. Let's make it wider. Let's try that. How does that look? Okay, now back to it. Uh, what are you guys saying? Wheel of Time is great. If you read it, there's 13 books and they're all a thousand pages. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. Not theology, but drawing from my background. Uh, Bachelors of Psychology, Sid is the wise old man archetype. Yeah, which Thunder Gods are often categorized as. Yeah, you're right. You're right. As a Swede, the Viking Snorri himself speculated the that the Viking gods might have been real humans, which just became myths centuries later. So even people back then 
uh, were suspect of the past. Um, mm, yeah, and Rama definitely has that vibe as well. Okay, yeah, now this is great stuff. You've got this wise mentor type, certainly to Clive, but you also have, again, don't, don't neglect the fact that this is the thunder storm god. And storm gods, I, I think particularly in the Bible, let me um, enhance uh, myself a little bit here. You know what? I don't think that's going to work after all. Let me pull this down. Yeah, that is not working for me. What if we just put you up in the... That may be too much. I'm really trying to... Hmm. Man, I don't know where to put y'all. Well, we'll deal with that in just a second. Okay. Um, one of the things that I love to talk about in my Final Fantasy XV class when we discuss Rama is the idea of this God of provision. And um, in the Old Testament of uh, the Bible, the Israelites have a hard time, especially as they're in the wilderness, um, nomadic people dealing with the elements of the desert, right? And so while they would beseech um, Elohim or Yahweh, their God, um, for rain and stuff, especially the prophet Samuel, they would constantly turn to other gods, particularly the god Baal. Now, Baal is oftentimes ca categorized as like a demon and um, like um, even a, a, um, a variant of like Beelzebub eventually, right? But Baal... Uh, is actually much more akin to like a storm god and has a close relationship um, with some of the mythos of uh, the Hebrew uh, Jewish god of, of the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures. So this is a really interesting piece. Um, this storm god Baal would appear in storms. He would appear in fire and floods and um, kind of these spectacles of sorts, but particularly in rain and in thunder and in lightning. And so they would cry out to him to provide for them. We're going to see that a little bit more um, with Sid as we go through tonight. As we go into this next part, think to yourself, I love the, the aspects that y'all have kind of brought up here. Think to yourself, how is Sid this wizened mentor? Um, secondly, how is he a provider and how does he embody these elements of provision that so many religions convey or, or kind of put on God. Okay, that, that's enough out of me. Let's get back to the game. Okay, up to the hideaway. I'm going to find the right spot for these. Not much further now. But we're in the middle of the Deadlands. Keen eye, you. The blight sucked this place dry. Meaning no trees, no birds, and no magic. But it also means no neighbors. The last place anyone would think to look. Hey, thank you, Crab 11. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. You are awesome. Thank you. Home sweet home. But how do you survive without magic? How does anyone? Hard work and a bit of nails. You must be starving. 
Crab. Love the conversation you guys really had with the resident art for 16, one of the best FFs ever so. made, in your opinion. Same. I love this one. Um, You're back. Glad you liked the conversation. That was a fun uh, night. Oh, yeah. And this is the dominant. How cold since we found her. I was hoping you might give her a look over. All right. Goots, get her upstairs. Well, none will... Don't fret about Karen. I've taken care of her fee. All of it. She's the best healer this side of the belt. You've nothing to worry about. Go on. Have a look around. I'll be in my solar. No, you should worry about Karen. Ah. Uh. Top three FF characters. You like Karen from Karen's Toll? You reckon he's a soldier then? Karen. We're surprised if he wasn't. The smell of war is thick about him. He is a bit too much like Hodor for, from Game of Thrones. Kate Sakotal, I think that you are kind of correct. He's definitely an inspiration, right? So everybody, this is the hideaway. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you've played 16, then you know this place. Um, Ansem's Wise, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, welcome to the stream. I'm glad that you made it tonight. Thank you. Thank you for hopping in. Um, so, uh, this is the hideaway. This is a place for people to come and be safe from the world around them. You'll, you'll know, uh, you'll notice that everybody here is a bearer of these marks, these tattoos. They are for now. people who um, would be um persecuted mistreated enslaved in the world around them and so sid has created a place for people to be which is pretty cool pretty cool uh let's see alexander says could there be an association with the storms being intense and chaotic but providing essential resource water and fathers often the intense but um but providing why most thunder gods are seen as the wise yeah i think that's a great similarity there is uh, intensity and chaos but there's provision and these things come together um it's a chaotic provision um in some respects but ultimately um people are provided for um killer name kingdom hearts on top okay Hoven, just settle down all right uh the hideaway is literally the oasis bastion for bears in the middle of the deadlands that sid leads absolutely it is yay storm god okay no i suppose i'll be needing a new sword then you'll need to speak with Black or father gods yeah yeah no I, I think that you're right alexander that's great Working on a pet project of mine. A bit of a chat delay. She's not biting the hand that feeds her. All right. I was hoping we might try and solve the mystery of poor Clive Rossfield, a bearer of the Sambrequa Imperial Army sent behind enemy lines, with orders to wait until it turned into a brawl, then slit the dominant's throat in the chaos. Hmm. I didn't know it was her. How could it be? And so, to save her neck, you slit your sergeants, then set your sights on the hills, conveniently forgetting how the Empire deals with deserters. Because with that on your chop, my friend, we both know you won't be getting far. You've fallen a long way, Lord Rossfield. <sighs> a lot of it said that I'm a poor host. What do you mean to do with her? Do with her? Why nothing? Her life is her own now. If I wanted to use her, do you think I'd be talking to you? All I want to do is help. Dominance like her, branded like you. 
Of course, the realm doesn't approve, which is why we live in a cave. And it's also why we need help from Brandy who know one end of a sword from the other. What say you, Clive? Will you join us? I love the cinematography on this. Just really cool. Sid, was it? I trust that you'll do right by Jill. But until my brother is avenged, I must walk my own path. Avenged? My brother was murdered by a second dominant of fire. Phoenix is evil twin. Oh, bugger me. Another rumor proven true. I only stand here today because of Joshua. Thirteen years I've waited for this chance. I've slept in filth, drunk from a gutter, killed more men than I can count. You're right. The Empire will not suffer a deserter. This will be my best opportunity. My last. Which is why you should join us. I told you I'm not interested, I know. One of my scouts sent word there's a group of branded fugitives north of here in the Imperial village of Lost Wing. Among them is one he believes to be a dominant of fire. Is he certain? I still can't get over how good the voice acting what is. So we go and ask him. Mesmerizing. This doesn't mean I'm joining you. Best mate ready then. You'll find everything you need down in the main hall, as well as a few things you don't. Have fun. Uh, Ansem says Sid, Jesse, and Fang are top three Final Fantasy characters, by the way. <laughs> I love Sid, I love Jesse, and I love Fang. Uh, rare to see somebody with the Final Fantasy 13 top character. I love Final Fantasy 13 though, so big appreciate that. There's Hodor. I mean, Goots. He's he in Oh, no. Goots, was it? Perhaps you can help. Sid asked me to make ready for our mission. How does one go about that here? Uh, well, uh, there's old Nan's place. Oh, oh, uh, on second thoughts, uh, you maybe want to see Blackthorn first. Hmm. A blacksmith? To, to the, the forge, forge is, then. Oh, wait, no, hold up. You'll be needing this. Blackthorn won't take no notice of you otherwise. Might not anyway. Sorry guys, I am trying to figure out some things with your uh with the chat uh chat box here so that y'all can actually see it. There's some. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, Leon uh, Crescent has some great information here. Baal is the Lord of Fertility and Storms from which in the city of Ekron worship Baal um, with an honorific calling him Baal Zebul, which means the Lord of the Heavenly Dwelling. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's where we get the, um, the, the uh, beginnings of um, which is eventually going to be Beelzebub in, in some ways. Uh, let's see, uh, which means Lord of the Heavenly Dwelling, which we draw it back to storm and rain. In Semitic religion, he was a false god, giving him a derogatory name, Beelzebub. There you go. That's why we get Be Beelzebub. My brain just went on a tangent. That's exactly right. And I, I love that. Um, old sad boy. Uh, VV must be in the top three of all time, though. Kate Sakodal, VV is definitely top three for a lot of people. Blackthorn is the best blacksmith ever, to be honest. Okay, listen. Um... Blackthorn would be one of the best blacksmiths ever if he was on, like, Prozac or something like that. He is the saddest black blacksmith I've ever seen in my life. Uh, he's got, like, a 
imposter syndrome complex. Um, Does it look like this room here? But it, nonetheless, here he is, a surly smith. Are you Blackthorn? What if I am? I'm no time for idle chatter. What if I am? I'm not here to talk. I'll be accompanying Sid to Lostwing, and I need you to see to my equipment. You could be accompanying the goddess Grieger to her holy bedchamber, for all I care. I'm not lifting a finger for you. Mm. Is that so? I'm trying to fix this for you guys. I'm really struggling, though. This is the best Sid, though. Why don't we do that? Oh, I think I fixed it. I think I just fixed it, you guys. Hmm. I've done it. Uh, continental rum? You want some rum? Okay. This Sid is the best Sid. I do, do agree. Do you want that or not? His I need for Prozac just endears him to me further. No. Honestly, yeah. Uh, the Fair fact that they goods. don't make it for him. Tarya should get all right, on that. All right. No need to be hasty. Let's have a look at you. Black, whenever I hear Blackthorn, I think of Blizzard's first game. I can't be the only one. Yeah. <laughs> I doubt that lot could stay a Moogle's fart. Bloody Imperials. They'd rather see their bearers dead than kid it out properly. I'll do what I can. As a favor to Goot's mind. An iron belt? Yeah, I'll do that. Even though I definitely don't need it. And the belt seems a square. Came an engine. You want anything else? You bring your own materials. I'll bear that in mind. I'll Thank you. Bearer that in mind. Yeah. I became an engineer and I got into uh, astronomy because of Sid Highwind. Don't Heck yeah! Decide what's best for you. Vicarid, I went 33 years without thinking about Moogle farts. Uh, <laughs> that is fair. That is fair. And Runor says there was a recent interview talking about the efforts they took to make the voice actors as good as it is. Um, started because Yoshida and Takai specifically requested it for the English VA. Groups recording in the same room and the amount of experimentation allowed in line delivery. Listen, they nailed it. Um, and the Are voice acting quick? cast have just the been amazing. Thought, through and through. The ultimate weapon. I need the utterance of creation, which I have, and uh, two other things that God only knows. So there's, there's that. I undoubtedly will have to do all of the side quests in order to get those two things. Anything so. else? But we'll get it, because we're, we're all about that. All about pain like that. Hey, Goots, what's up, my dude? The gift worked. You have my thanks. I, uh, uh, <laughs> Come on, nearly there. Blankets, quick as you like. I did do the side quest in my first playthrough. Um, yeah, there were some really, well, really good ones. There were also some that while the bed's made up. Uh, <laughs> well, you're just gonna stand there. Someone face some water. I'll get the bucket. You go and see if I don't needs out, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, me? <laughs> the voice acting might be the best you've heard in a video game. It should win an award for that alone. Phenomenal deliveries for everyone. Ooh, yes, absolutely, yes. Into. Who are they? Huh? They're freed Imperial bearers. Who the hell are you? <laughs> Shit, at this rate, he won't make it through the night. Oh, 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 you can oh, find your way up oh, them stairs Riley. to the infirmary. We need tire. Well, go on. <laughs> Shift your ass. Was Tarya the one looking after Jill? Then off to see Tarya. Don't help this guy with the box.
when I first saw this. Your friend this. needs her rest. Mm -hmm. There'll be time for tearful reunions when she's recovered. Mm. I'm not here for Jill. You're wanted downstairs. There are injured bearers in need of attention. Well, why didn't you say so? <sighs> I did say so. She's pleasant. When I first saw this, I was hoping that the new bearer was the one holding the apple crate from the prologue. Oh, that would have been nice. Almost as convenient as Sid having Torgal. He's going to be all right, but I'll need to examine them both in the infirmary. Mm. My work's just begun. Toria, a physician's work is never done. It's only paused. This game has great voice acting, but nothing is comparable to Link, the faces of evil of Zelda, the one of Gamelon Hoven. That's enough out of me. You. You're going to get silenced. It's no easy thing casting off your chains. By the time most pluck up the courage, they're already too far gone. Mm. These two here are the lucky ones. The name's Otto. You need anything? You ask me. Otto. Well, Otto, I do need some supplies. Do you now? Then Lady Karen over there will be more than happy to help you. All right, Karen. Right. Oh, and thanks. Be seeing you. Not likely. I won't be staying. Is that right? Well, for as long as you are here, consider yourself welcome. You helped us today, and we won't forget it. You are welcome, Otto. Side quests unlocked. Everybody's favorite part of this game, right? Who are these people? Who are these people? She'll always just be Lady Karen. I need you? supplies for my journey to Lost Wing. Otto said you could provide them. What's that? Does the newcomer think it proper to make demands of a poor old matron before even introducing himself? Look, Karen. <laughs> it's Clive. Well, Clive. I hear that dog is yours. Yep. Since he followed Sid home one night, I've seen to it that his chin's rubbed and his belly fed. Though I suppose that's your job now. Unless you lose him again. I won't. Not again. Thank you for watching him. So, were you going to buy something? The level of, what? like, serendipity you and convenience shower your lordship with my hard of Torgal just while hanging you out with Sid. about with a pocket full of gill? Life doesn't work that way, lad. Now, let's see some coin. Karen is not a recurring character, Hoven. He is not. She is not. I don't need your items. Look, we are all stocked up. Well, I can buy three potions. That's You'll not find a better price than that. That's all. Why, you barely are guilty of name. Karen's name threw you for a bit. Yeah, now. One second. And after all I've done for you. Oh, Torgo. All right. All right, I can make an exception. But just this once, mind. My stores are getting cluttered and I need to make room for the next shipment. Thank you. Thank me. Thank, Thank you, your dog. dog. Uh, Karen's name threw you off for a bit uh, of a loop when you first played it. Definitely wasn't expecting the name of the ferryman of the underworld to be a merchant. Yeah, <laughs> love that her shop is called Karen's Toll. <laughs> that's, that's really good. So, she's just ferrying you to death. Uh, why don't we do a few of these side quests real quick? Do you think we should go real and fast. help? Don't think I haven't noticed you stealing sips from that. Ah, a new face. Hello. And dare I hope, a willing pair of hands. The fat chocobo is a demanding mistress, and we are too few to keep her on her feet. Might I persuade you to deliver a meal or two to souls in mm. need of sustenance? For your trouble, I can offer you the contents of my strong box and my enduring gratitude. Um, I don't see why not. I don't see why not. 
I do have to do all the side exactly quests again have the honor of in order to get the platinum, correct? Delighted to make your acquaintance, Clive. I'm Kenneth, and mine are the weary shoulders upon which the weight of this fine establishment rests. Now, I have three hungry customers awaiting their victuals. Take these if you would, and be careful, they're hot. Burying our wallet to death, more like it. And Karen is also the shopkeep in su uh, Supergiants Hades. How yep, I think been, you're right. Uh, I'm one of the few people that have a fascination with the first two side quests. Hey, listen, I love the first two side quests, actually. I'm, I'm a big fan of these. Um, even though it's food delivery, um, I like it. And the reason I like it is because it conveys the idea of what this place is. This is a place that Sid has made to provide, again, provide for those that have need, the bearers, right? And we're going to learn a little bit more about that in the coming um, streams, but that's, that's big. Uh, Ragnarok, every English person pronounces it wrong. We do say Ragnarok. Uh, you never say a hard rag. It's more like rang or wrong. Uh, so it's Rongnarok. Is that it? Am I saying it right? Rongnarok? Or is it Rangnarok? Rongnarok or Rangnarok? And that God of War, Rongnarok, uh, Rook was the worst for your Swedish ears. Oh, man, that's how you know it's American. <laughs> yeah. Rung, rung, no rook. That's awesome. So you're Swedish and you're watching the stream. How cool is that? Uh, these first two side quests feel intentionally humbling to you, like he's entering a monastery where everyone is equal or something. His station doesn't matter here. I love that point, Vicarid. That's great. Had a discussion with a YouTube friend over Discord and how he doesn't like 16 side quests as it was repetitive. Well, I enjoyed it as it brings more story and world building. Yeah. Um, I actually have a video that's eventually going to come out um, as soon as I finish it um, on side quests and why we like some and why we don't. Uh, that's going to be coming out. Oh, gosh, if it wasn't Texas Bama weekend, I'd say it'd be next week, but we'll see. Your food. I was hoping it might be. Well, doesn't this look fine? Thank you, lad. You're new, aren't you? Kenneth's running you ragged already, I expect, the old rascal. Mm. Well, he did say he'd give me something for my Hi, trouble. Hi, We'll be here. <laughs> and so he should. We're not slaves anymore. Well met, lad. And keep up the good work. Rang. Okay. Yeah, much more. Rang the rook. It's a rang the rook. I want to be able to say it uh, the way that you would you would say it. Rang the rook. Man, they really messed that up in God of War Rag Ragnarok. Rang the rook. Gosh, I. That's gonna be a problem for me, isn't it? It's nice to see the hideaway finally coming alive. So long ago. With old August before scampering back to his solo. Yeah. Oh, my thanks. <laughs> I hope you do not think me lazy for waiting to be served like a lord. Oh, gosh, I love this. <laughs> Only my this former master did not use me kindly, you see. Left me half lame, truth be told. Oh, but Sid took me in nonetheless. <laughs> now, the hideaway is the home I never knew, and a mighty fine one at that. No. Well, he's not out chasing I mean, these Sid's up there in that hole of his. These give you context for the kind of place that Sid has created. I, I have no problem with this side quest, to be honest. None. Well, well. There's so much more to farming than just seeds and soil. <laughs> uh, your food. Just a moment. I need to finish this. I won't be a burden. I'm of no use to anyone as I am, but maybe... I can master this. All right, but see that you eat it before it gets cold. Of course. Thank you. That's the last one. Eh? I'd better let Kenneth know. Okay, Kitsukodal says 
English is my fourth language. Took up the language to understand FF7 as a kid. Took you two years to learn the language. Brought home a translation book from school and played with it. That's awesome. Self-taught. That's awesome. Um, I'm a side quest completionist, but some of the quests toward the end became a slog. Uh, yeah, I hope and I agree. Um, uh, it said like uh in fur. Okay, fur, fur. So it's rang ne. Is that right? Uh, rang the rook. Rang the rook. Rang the rook. Am I saying it right? Rang the rook. Uh, Alexander half lame. I wonder if his curse had started to set in. You know what? That's a good point. We should go look at his uh, his legs to see if it did set in. The iron blood were quick to sound the retreat once time yeah, he's turned up. Wearing like pants and stuff. But yeah, he had worked him so hard that maybe a curse had begun to set in. That would make sense. All done, I presume. Splendid. They were bearers. All three of them. Not slaves waiting upon their master's pleasure, but men waiting to be fed like equals. Mm. Indeed. Equality is the very cornerstone upon which our little community is founded. Beyond these walls, we are scorned as slaves. Mm. Speaking only when spoken to, eating only what scraps our masters deign to give us. The first hot meal here is the first many will have known. In the hideaway, we are free. Truly free to speak as we please, when we please, and to eat what and when we desire. More than reason enough to trust in Sid's vision, wouldn't you say? Now, I promised you something for your trouble, did I not? The contents of my strongbox are yours to do with as you will. Thank you, Clive. Do come and visit me again, won't you? Hmm. Right, I, I mean, understanding um, how these things are, are helping Clive live in to who he's going to become. I mean, that's that's an amazing part of this, these sequences of side quests. I love it. There's a spoony bard. We love the spoony bard. And lightning struck his yoke did break his life his own again. With thunder's roll, he knew his fate and would fight it to the end. Amazing. Kenneth is such a bro. Love that guy. What do you think? I woke this morn inspired. Freaking Edward from Final Fantasy IV over here. <laughs> Spoony Bard. Okay, let's go hit this side Careful quest you. up over here. You know, I... I don't know if I'm going to do every side quest on stream, but I these I'm are actually pretty important because they explain the place that Sid has has created. And to understand Sid, you kind of have to understand what he's done and what he's created here. Um, so yeah, we're going to deliver some food on, on this path. Damn it. We'll be needing more wood. If I step away to fetch any, this lot will be down around our ears. Ah, you there. Perfect timing. I couldn't persuade you to fetch me some timber, could I? Well, why not? It's what I'd I do around here. To. Oh, thank you. You'll be helping me and the hideaway both. It takes a lot of work to keep this place standing. <laughs> More than we can manage, if I'm honest. It certainly looks like you've got your hands full. Uh, you can say that again. The Fallen knew their craft, make no mistake, but not even their handiwork lasts forever. That's why the walls need shoring up. Can't have the uh, vegetable patch crushed before our first harvest now, can we? <laughs> hmm. No, I suppose not. All right, where can I find this wood? Ask over at the White Ads. They'll point you in the right direction. Thanks again. I really appreciate the help. All right, we'll get you some lumber, buddy. Uh, okay, what are we seeing? Uh, Kenneth Sabro, love. Uh, would you rather live in the Hideaway or Last of Us TV shows, Commune and Jackson? I have the Hideaway, obviously. Um, just because, like, I mean, look at these people. Also, I'd rather live in a Final Fantasy game than The Last of Us. I love The Last of Us, but come on. 
Um, love him too, but I'm going to refrain from a South Park. Clive is wearing too much armor during this segment. Yeah, I mean, it's really unfortunate. You can't see his chest. Um, that's that's why most people will play this game if you look on Twitter. So, you know. In 15, we objectified Cindy. In 16, we objectified Clive. So what happens? I was obsessed about the ruins. My first playthrough was hoping to see them come lifelike. Uh, people looking at Greek, Roman... Ruins in the Dark Ages? Yeah. Uh, have I loaded up the DLC armor? You know what? We um, we probably are about Excuse to me. if we go to the um, Arendt The man Stone, working Arendt over Stone. by the garden sent me to fetch some wood. Ah, that'll be Jeffrey, Master Carpenter. Luck would have it, we've just finished cutting the timber he's after. You take as much as you need from the stack. Thank you. No, not at all. We appreciate the assistance. Everybody's so helpful here, right? They're, they're just... This game has a lot to say about society and like we all play a role and we're gonna help each other and do do good with one another because our society, our community yeah. depends on it. I love that. I better get this too. As a father, it's interesting Jeffrey, how simple autonomy can be the strongest motivator sometimes. Yeah. As a father, I wonder uh, wh how, how does that play oh, into yeah, it a little bit more? Their Bought a PS5 for this game, uh, so The Last of Us is a game you should play, right? Yes, absolutely, The Last of Us Part 1 for PS5, and then uh, play Part 2 after that, for sure. Oh, you're back. Hope fetching that wood wasn't too much trouble. This armor is very Game of Thronesy, or just general medieval, I suppose. Will this be enough? This will do nicely, thank you. With a bit of luck, the walls won't be falling in on us just yet. That sounds ominous. <laughs> oh, it's not as bad as all that. And it's a damn sight better than the alternative. We're safe, we're warm, and we're hidden. A lot of Sony first what party to catch up on Vicarid, yeah. Now Sony's got some great exclusive games. Welcome for to the sure. fold. There's no need to. That's not a matter of need, my friend. You're one of us now. If you haven't played them, I would suggest the Uncharted series as well. Um, just really, really great games. If you like superheroes, uh, Spider-Man's a great one. Um, if you don't, that game might change your mind, but... Um, later on, he gets that Japanese-type armor. Yep, you're right, you're right. Okay, let's go to this stone. Been an Xbox guy forever. But are you playing Starfield? That's the real question, Fulton. Hall of Virtue. I guess we're gonna commence training. Kill a goblin. I will probably on Xbox Cloud on your PC. Fair. Okay. I guess we're done with the training. There's no real need to keep doing this. Okay, is that it? We good? I think I can access the DLC armor here. You're all done. So ready for mm. Rebirth, what remake without owning a Leaving PS4 and borrowed a friend's console. Ah, yeah. Let him keep the game when I finished. Hey, if you haven't you played Intergrade, most, Lady um, it always is. Don't stop you going, does it? And the Yuffie DLC, that is really worth it. Should be it. fun. It's really good. Right. I never liked Yuffie in the original, but I love her in remake Intergrade. All right, let's uh, da, da, da. let's go back to the stone over here. Uh, no, I guess we can't access these things yet. 
Sandwich King, what's up? Welcome to the chat. Um, if we get another Decidio, what would be the stage for 16? Uh, hmm. Hard to say. It would probably be... I would love, like, Sandbreck. That would be amazing. Uh, let's see. I don't know if you were joking about the objectification, but I'm really surprised at how sexy they made Clive. Yeah, Clive, he's a good-looking man, right? Uh, I mean, even with the face tattoo of the bearer, it's like, what what did they do? And then, like, later on when he gets a different outfit, I mean, good grief. Homeboy does not skip bench press day. Um, very strong PS5 year. Yeah, yeah, it is. There's a good girl. Um, Alan Weeks uh, Awake and Spider-Man 2. Yeah, it's a great... It's a great time. Great time to be a PS5 owner. Uh, for the bears who don't even know how to eat on their own, Sid facilitating an environment where they can work on managing their own basic needs and that being the reason why they are so eager to help. Yeah, absolutely, Alexander. And again, that just conveys to this core attribute of provision that we see in the dominant of Rama. Um, and I, I'm gonna like be, I'm going to bemoan and belabor this point. I'm gonna it's almost gonna be tedious when we talk about all of these icons, but I, I promise you it's building to something that's really, really important for understanding what's going on in this game. The icons represent a trait of the divine, and uh, we'll, we'll get into that uh, probably about halfway through the game when it starts to pay off a little bit. Okay, let's keep going. It's been a great five years of PS. Halo going downhill has hurt. Oh, man. Borrowed disc one, yeah. Bastard blood flies everywhere. Sid bringing order to chaos. I told you we should yeah. have taken the crystal road. And I told you we're outlaws. And you want every bounty hunter in Storm hurrying us from here to the holy capital. Besides, what's wrong with a shortcut through nature's splendor? Uh, nature's you know, splendor. The Deadlands claim more of the realm each day. But a place like this still exists is a miracle in itself. Blood flies and all. Mm -hmm. We'll be back in Imperial land soon. You all right? Never better. Never better. Sounds like it. Good boy. <laughs> that there is a fine hound. Soon took to hunting. I love Fearless that everybody's like. like, that's a fine hound. It's good to have you back, Toggle. Elwin no, said it, Clive said it, in the forest after nightfall. I suppose not. All right, let's do some battle. Gosh, this is so pretty. I finished 16 on money and replayed this level for a defeat the boss without be damage based. trophy. They'll be deadly based. Yeah, That's you're right. Assassin can't handle them. How reassuring. You're welcome for that and the shortcut. This really is a pretty place. All right, Clive, let's go. Like, this just freaking shows off the power of the PlayStation, right? Like, look at this detail. I love, 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 love this area. Dad Sid takes Sun Clive fishing and hunting. So true. Maybe that's friendly, like Joggle. Gotta get back to your readings. Ah, oh, Hoven, have a great time, buddy. Enjoy the reading. Thanks for hopping in. We'll see you later. Freaking love Odin, you guys. Minotaur, really. They do change up the enemies that are in Final Fantasy mode, don't they? That's awesome. Remember, 
playing as a boy, uh, as a kid, uh, thinking the in-game graphics would be like CGI. Man, the graphics are so incredible now, right? It's just a great time to be a gamer, I think. Do it. Is it this way? Yeah. I love the combat in this game. It's so fun. Mm -mm. Name is he doing this far south? Good Grieger's name. We'll talk about Grieger in Looking a few seconds. No more walls where he's from. Mm. The north was one of the first parts of Storm to fall to the blight. Mm. Oh, sod. I'd invite him over for a cup of tea if I didn't think he'd eat the dog. Well, let's see, 2023 let's try and stay out of its path. might be the best year in gaming since 2010, maybe. I Honestly, it is banger after banger. I said this on Twitter earlier today, and uh, it, it's been an amazing year for games. We're not done yet. Uh, people have almost too many options now. If I started with JRPGs today, I'd be lost. Back then, I didn't have many options at the store. That's true. There's a lot of options. Remember when I said this it's almost overwhelming. Well, the shrubs of these parts are almost better. Tiny one thing to mention is that. This is the group of um, icon abilities that I use when I beat the game. And uh, they are kind of my favorite. Just by uh, refreshing your knowledge of Indra, whom Rama is based on, remember that in Hinduism, I'll take it from here. Indra defeated Britra, who obstructed human prosperity and happiness. I really like the parallel with Sid here. Sid is also wanting to stop that with, with, which obstructs human prosperity and happiness. Oh my gosh, that's a great, great point. Um, I love that. Uh, 04 was the best year in gaming for you. Oh yeah, that was a great year. World of Warcraft, Half-Life 2, Halo 2, Metal Gear... 3, Doom 3, KOTOR, heck yeah, that, man, 2004 was a great year. 16's writers knew what they were doing, I, yeah, agreed. That's how I felt about 15, that's how I feel about 16 as well. Um, so many incredible illusions. I love that idea of Indra and uh, his defeating Britra. Uh, oh, that's great, I love it. The ruins, they're everywhere, aren't they? Mm. Some say there was a time they blocked out the stars. Down was the only way left for them to go. There's probably a lesson to be learned from that. Reacher is big in the current FF14 storyline. Yeah, uh, in a bit of a different way um, than the, the Hindu myths. Um, would say, but yeah, um, FF14 is something you haven't really been able to get into. Oh man, um, I know a lot of people have a, um, a lot to say, but I love it personally. I played it for 12 years now, and it's great. I was seven playing FF10 and thought it was the peak of video games. Now we get a two season linked film as a video game, isn't that the truth? Gosh, look at this. 
It's just so pretty. I remember my first playthrough of this game. I took so many pictures. Here, I just like want to walk through the park. It's so pretty. Oh, what are you? Ragranubus. Let's go, baby. A wyvern, you say? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Ah! A lot going on on stream right now. <laughs> ah! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on. Okay. Alright, what have I missed? Ah, you jerk. Ah! I wanted to get it off. I wanted to pull it off. Now this is pod racing. Is that a reference? Was that the reference you were going for? Just blast him here. Okay, what did I miss? What would blocking out the stars imply? Say more, Claymore. Um, <laughs> see what I did there? Uh, say more uh, uh, about that. Uh, let's see. Speaking of 10, I was so amazed uh, by voices that I never had that cringe as people seem to have about it today. Even Titus was fine for me. I'm a Titus guy, by the way. I know that a lot of people in the devs call him Titus, but it's about the tide, and I roll with the tide, roll tide. Um, so Titus. Um, what about blocking out the stars? Uh, yeah, I, I say more about that. Uh, Puppy Duck. Hey, what's up, Puppy Duck? Um, first time viewer really enjoying the lecture series. It's been really nice to be part of the class. Hey, I am so glad that you're hanging out. Uh, we are just getting started. And so um, we're going we're gonna to deep dive, man. Um, right now, we're kind of like in the shallow end. We're in the baby pool. But we're, we're, we're going to go like deep dive, mind melting, mind blowing stuff by the end of this series. And I cannot wait to share some things with you. There were moments when I screamed and like had to throw my controller down and just journal uh, for a bit playing this game. And I, um, my friends uh, that were also playing this game got tired of me texting them all the time. So anyway, uh, now I do this. Uh, okay, let's go. Flawless Dragon Talon. Must be a nest nearby. Keep your eyes open. <sighs> a nest, you say? Oh, get that item. Well, it appears we won't be going this way. I'll admit I hadn't counted on that. Torgal? Blood flies. What is it, boy? At least one of us knows these woods. Thank you, Toggle. Thank you, Toggle. I need to show y'all my little Toggle sitting next to me right now. She's being such a good girl. She's a good girl. Uh, yeah, the cringe is misunderstood. Um, ah, no, you don't. No, you don't. Come on, don't let him do it. Yeah, Alexander, I totally agree with you there. Um, the cringe of the story is, uh, or the um, dialogue at times, it's levity. Like, it's meant to be kind of silly and goofy at times. And that's, that's okay. A little help. 
help, Sogol. This time. Give me ice. Give me ice. Did. Like, Doesn't mean I have to. Killing all of the foliage. I'm gonna swap up a few of my icons real fast. Um, doo -doo -doo. I think I'm gonna go with a little bit of Garuda. Uh, we'll go with. Mm, Giga Flare, maybe not. Um, instead of Impulse, I'm going to go with Satellite. I think it's going to be a better idea. Um, and I'm okay with the rest of this, I'm pretty sure. Uh, okay, so what do you say? Like no. No, it doesn't. Oh, bless you, Clive. Uh, maybe keeping him with uh, Metia's implications. The stars are an implication of Mucos and of stories. Orion and Scorpius, for example, the Fallen blocking out the stars themselves could allude to the same idea that they began to shift to Logos as they became more technologically inclined. Claymore, I, I think you may be onto something. Um, I would love for you to kind of put a pin in that and let's bring that up um, once we begin to talk about these concepts of Muthos and Logos because uh, I, I think that that is so, so interesting what you're bringing up here. And, um, yeah, I'm trying to be respectful of, um, some spoiler implications for people. Did I come this way? I think that this might be the way that I came. No, uh, maybe not. But, uh, no, Claymore, that's an excellent point. No, 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 you're, you're great, Claymore. And, like, I have to watch myself because, like, I want to speak about the things that are happening at the middle and the end of the game particularly. But um, like this is the building to it. And, uh, there, there are a couple of people that are just kind of watching to, um, to see the game, right? And uh, so kind of, kind of cool. Let's see, uh, what else is this? Torgal reminds me of the Swedish hunting dog, uh, Jomtund, which Vikings had for hunting as well. They look like wolves. Uh, uh, Kit Scuttle, uh, I am loving the information that you are providing for me, and I, I want you to know that I'm like taking. I watch these streams afterwards, um, and like take some notes on this sort of thing. So I really, really appreciate you doing this. Uh, Dragon Quest XI kept showing a red star the whole game as well, but it ended up being a major part of the story and true ending. Yeah, yeah, you're right cool to see you live i have to go play some sea of stars now ah sea of stars is an awesome game i'm playing that as well i'll, I'll be playing that a little later tonight actually um off stream thank you let's go uh ha have a great time christopher enjoy very interested in getting into metia i feel like i'm missing a lot there aren't we all are we all Okay, boss fight. Moment of truth here. Will I die? So You'd better hope so. This shouldn't take too long. So much for your short. Oh, that was a not a not a great start, everybody. It's not quite as quick, but it'll be a damn sight quicker if you help. I think so exactly. Well done, Torvald. Ah! Come on, get 
that attack off. Fafnir. Yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about Fafnir while I uh, don't die? <laughs> Try not to die. Ah! Yeah, baby. Fafnir of the North Lane. Holy smokes, y'all have really gone uh, far with this. Okay, let's let's read. S uh, Sigurd killed Fafnir with the help of Odin, just like I just did. Uh, Clive with the help of Sid slash Odin. Oh, okay, kind of like a thunder uh, sort of vibe. Yeah, not actual Odin in the game, but yeah. Um, I have uh, even been to the Runestone here in uh, Sudermanland. Sodermanland, 
yeah, which depict him being slain by Sigurd. That's awesome. Um, that would be cool to see one day. Yeah, a lot of things are lost uh, to us. Why does the runestone always have snakes on them? Uh, in medieval, medieval times, it was speculated that Vikings had a snake cult and worshipped the world serpent. Could be. That's awesome. Could also be a Christian slander about pagans, satanic, and the serpent snakes just be guardians of the runes. That's good. That's good. Uh, serpent's also kind of like a keeper of knowledge sort of thing, um, which is an uh, interesting piece as well. Okay, really cool stuff. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm going to come back and rewatch the stream and take some notes on that. That's great. We're not going to go too much further tonight because uh, we're saving Benedicta stuff for uh, Tuesday. But I do want to wrap up with... Um, a little bit of what happens next. Oh, come on. Stand back. Oh, there he is. Thunder God himself. Ha! I love that. Dominant. Surprise. I am. I. Well, not by choice, mind. Old bloody Rome of strapping young lads. <laughs> and it was this sorry sack of bones, Rome, who saw fit to home. Hmm. Sid. You say you want to help dominance and bearers. Well, what's in it for you? What's in it for you? What's in it for me? The same as for all of us. What we want and deserve. Save for our knack, dominance and bearers are no different from anyone else. The ability to use magic or summon great beasts should command respect, but instead has left us outcasts. Our kind are used and discarded like tools, yet we are men, so why must we die as less? I see. So what you're saying is you want to start a war. Hmm. <laughs> ah, you flatter me, lad. But my days as a firebrand are long behind me. No, I only wish to offer our kind of choice. A place where we can die on our own terms. Uh, guys, that was uh, maybe the most important line that we have heard so far uh, in this to kind of understand Sid here. Sid says, um, like Clive says, all right, so you're wanting to start a war, a war to fight for the bearers and, and for the right uh, of this. And, and Sid responds like, no, I'm not interested in that. My days of being a firebrand, essentially this, this match that's going to start some kind of war, those are long gone. Um, and uh, we, we can definitely talk. There's been some really interesting stuff that's come out in the uh, Ultimania, which is the compendium and encyclopedia of sorts. Um, with um, information that's not necessarily included in the game, but it's kind of developer notes. There's been a lot of information about Sid and um, how when his power awakened, he became a Lord Commander in uh, Willowood. Um, am I saying that right? Willowed? Um, I, I think um, I go back and forth between Willowed and Willowed. Uh, but anyway, um, he uh, fought in that. He was in wars and all this stuff. But now he says... All he wants to do is provide a place um, for bearers um, and branded to die on their own terms. Because that's not what they get. They, get to, they have to die at the will of somebody else now um, as slaves or as, as tools. Um, but it's, it's just an interesting thing um, that he is the one that's providing a place for them to die on their own terms and to live on their own terms to some degree. Um, so really good stuff. Was Snorri um, a Viking, also a Christian? I'm actually not sure on that. I'm reading between the lines and I got you. Uh, Hi, Wind. I, I see you talking about Metia. Uh, boy, you're going to have to wait till the end of, um, of, uh, um, <laughs> of this entire stream uh, sometime in October before we get into that. Uh, Walud. That's what I was thinking. I thought it was Walud, but somebody, uh, the chat in the uh, Resident Art uh, podcast the other night was like, uh, ripping me apart for saying it that way. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm saying it right, but whatever. Um, they also didn't like the fact that I said Muthos. 
Uh, but that's the ancient Greek coming out of me uh, versus mythos. Anyway, let's uh, let's get back to it. We'll finish up shortly. Oh, the All Father nickname. I got you, Alexander. That's a great, great thing. I hear you. Clive, what exactly do you plan on doing when you find this dominant the fire? Oh, this is important. What do you think? I'll show him the mercy he showed my brother and cut out the tongue of any man who tries to talk me out of it. All right. Forest dark enough, was it? Mm. Seer and clear of spoilers. Hey, I appreciate you, Josh. That's good. Freaking love Odin. Odin Bahamut, baby. King. Let's get them all inside. There we go. Beautiful. Those of you that have played and already beaten this game, um, who were your go to icons? What's up, Cassian? How you doing, man? Having a good night? Thanks for hopping in. A bit more. We're just. It was Phoenix Garuda with a splash of Rama uh, and Odin for you, night. I found that I could do the most damage if I combined um, Odin and uh, Bahamut. Um, gosh, this is such a pretty place. Oh gosh, a Chimera? Are you kidding me? What? Phoenix Bahamut Titan for you, though I use Odin a fair bit as well. Nice. I love it. Fantasy mode is fun. I am really enjoying it. song in the entire game? Yeah, this is a great song, isn't it? Couldn't part with Garuda's icon ability because of the pulling. Yeah, that's an important one. That's a good one. Meteorite. right. Quiet. Mm. The Royal Scout. Someone's far from home. 
Let's follow him. Huh? Originally from FF14, they are definitely in Final Fantasy 14. A Palace of the Dead, and then there was a um, weapon quest in A Realm Reborn post game that you had to fight them. They're in some of the older FFs too. And? All I see is Zidane's haircut. They, they're just down that way. All of them. Grieger's my witness. Excellent. Mm. We move. I, 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 I don't understand. Have I not proven loyal? Vicred, same. Me too. It is true my liege values loyalty above all else. <laughs> but were you not quick to betray your countrymen for the promise of coin? Mm. elite intelligences if we can capture her you weapons on the ground imperials mm -hmm. i guess we fight let's get this over with then At least they're not giant lizards. Right. Followed by limit break with great in FF mode to conserve items until I match the dodging carry. Nice. Vicred, have a great night. We are finishing up in just one moment. So I am not far behind you. That is not nearly enough. I arrived halfway because you believe much more value from more this given from the Ultimania. I have. I've been uh, following um, Audrey's translations all day. So. Oh, gotta push back. Ugh, get him. Behind you. this. Since we we're here, this is a moment to remember for the next team of the screen as it plays in the Benedictus Yung archetype. Alexander, absolutely. We're going to really deep, deep dive into um, Jungian philosophy next time, as well as um, Benedictus divine stuff. Been 
a deep dive. Go, where'd he go? Oh no! And now you turn! Alright, we're doing some work now. I love his last name. Yeah. We talked about Telemon a little bit earlier. Yeah. It's a great last name for him. Okay, we're gonna do this. I didn't mean to do it. That takes a lot of damage. Garuda, lend me your ah! Not this time. Not this time. <laughs> yeah, let's just blast him this way. That'll be good. Ah! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Not today. Not this time. Come on! This is a great fight, I love it. I am the lawless. They thought we were Imperials. Well, you do look the part. <laughs> Though you fight like a true shield of Rosaria, and one blessed by the Phoenix at that. Speaking of which, I wonder, does the other icon of fire give blessings, do you think? Only you don't believe me. And lo, the creator did make of the elements eight icons to serve as keepers of the one law. Hmm. Not that I've ever set too much store by holy doctrine, but on that point, it's clear. Fire has always had just the one warden, as of all the rest. A new one can't be born until the previous dies. And even that can take years. Hmm. The thing is, you don't strike me as a liar. Which leaves but one person who might be able to shed some light on the matter. And they're in Lost Wing. You did good, kid. As are our Waluda friends. Waluda! I, I was right. We should hurry before it gets dark. Those guys in chat, they just what don't if know. someone discovers the bodies? Well, and they'll be sorely disappointed. Fair. Yeah.
He's the coolest. He does rival Balthier um, as the coolest. You have a soft spot for the oak <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people do. All right, let's chat for a minute. So tonight we focused entirely on Sid. Um, Sidolphus Telemann, we love the guy, all right? Um, we've talked about how he's the best Sid, all that kind of stuff. But to our purposes, again, I remind you of um, just a couple of the, the things that we talked uh, about at the very beginning. I know that I sound like a broken record, but uh, my general thesis is that um, that the icons in this game, the dominance in this game, all represent a different trait or attribute of religiosity. Um, things like compassion or wrath or uh, tonight we talked a lot about provision, the provision of Rama um, and how Rama um, invokes a lot of things. We talked about Indra, um, somebody in the chat, I, I forget who, uh, I'd have to go back and look, but uh, talked about Indra um, who defeated Vritra um, in Hinduism who was basically a threat to prosperity and happiness and so um, Indra offered provision. In um, ancient Near Eastern um, mythology and religi religiosity, and even in the Old Testament and Hebrew scriptures, we have um, Yahweh as a counterpart to Baal. Um, and um, Baal is a storm god. Uh, Baal is a, a god uh, that, that um, they would cry out to to bring storms, to bring rain to harv uh, for, for uh, the fertility of crops and stuff. And I think that's a really, really interesting piece about all of this. Sid, in the same way, embodies those traits. He is the provider. And what does he do? He provides a place like uh, the hideaway for bearers and branded who are mistreated in the world. And I love what Sid says. He's going to create a place. It's not about starting a war. That his days of that are over. But he's going to create a place where bears can live and die on their own terms because they don't have a place. And this is him embodying the best traits of a God of provision. Yes, there's a ferocity. Yes, there's a fearsomeness that comes with Sid um, and with Rama and with the God of provision. And that's the thunder and the lightning and the spectacle. But he's choosing to embody the best of this icon, uh, this iconic ability by offering this provision and sometimes that provision is fierce and ferocity and um, ferocious so as we continue um, we think of Sid as this provider and what are the links that he will go to to provide and how does that embody and how does that point to the divine um, so many of the stories and the myths that we get in religion talk about God or the deity as being the provider. We certainly have those in Judeo-Christian mythology and, and uh, mythos. We also have them in Greco-Roman mythology. We have it in Norse mythology of the gods that provide. And I think that this is a really, really, really important piece here. Um, the wisdom to provide, the wisdom to care for. Um, high wind, you say justice is another thing that Sid embodies a lot. Yeah, and there, there can be multiple traits in here, which fits with Ramu's uh, divine judgment. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that it's important to understand how that divine judgment comes about. Um, what, uh, what role does pr prosperity and provision play in overall justice? Can justice be done without provision? Um, and I think that we'll have more conversations about that, especially as we get into like Bahamut a little bit later in this game. Um, let's see, Alexander, you say, I commented on the second to last Resident Arc pod for this game, said how the villains and secondary archetypes represent seven, uh, deadly sins or Jung ar archetypes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I think, and we're going to get into this in two streams, but we're going to talk about the shadow side of these gods, uh, the shadow side of these attributes. What's the dark side of a god of provision? What's the dark side of a god of, um, of even righteousness, um, a holiness, um, um, sacredness you know what, what are the dark sides of these and how do dominance in this game embody the best sides of those iconic attributes and how do they sometimes embody the shadow sides the shadow self as, as Jung, Jung would say right um, so we've got a lot to cover in the in the coming streams in the coming weeks um, 
if you would humor me for just a moment, like, uh, let's talk for a second. How does this resonate with you? How, how are you thinking? Am I full of it or am I like on to something here? Have you thought about these icons and these dominants as attributes of some of the most famous religious stories that we've got in the real world? Um, and uh, how, how do they relate? Um, uh, give me some feedback and some thoughts here. Um, I've said this before on Twitter, and I'll say it to you on, on stream as well. Um, I'm doing research uh, right now, and so we are research partners on this stream. We are colleagues um, collaboratively learning, and I, I think that we're, um, we're going to find some really cool things. So if you've got something, say it. I, like I said, um, I'm going to be taking meticulous notes on these streams because uh, it may turn into a YouTube video series. Uh, it may, knock on wood, turn into a book um, that, that I'm looking into doing. Uh, I'm so behind on the book thing. I've got a book on Final Fantasy 15 that I'm, I'm currently writing and a book on um, now Final Fantasy 16. And I've got a book on Judas Iscariot that I've got to put out at some point like, that I think is just going to be amazing. I uh, know you think that we're on to something. Awesome. Well, uh, listen, I, I love critique and I love to, to have a back and forth. So um, if, if we don't have conversations on here in stream or if something hits you in the middle of the night, um, I hope that you will hit me up on Twitter. Uh, it's at Prof Noctis over there. Um, and uh, we'll continue the conversation, keep it going. Um, also, uh, you know, this stream is not for everybody. I, I hope you understand that. Like, <laughs> there's other people that are more entertaining. There's other people that um, play the games with, with much greater finesse than I do. But you may know people that you're like, hey, this, this could be something that they would be interested in. Um, and I, I think that it would be really interesting to bring them in and get other perspectives. The more the merrier for the purpose of research um, and for the purpose of, of creating something, I think uh, that would be really, really cool. So anyway, if you don't follow me on Twitter, follow me over at Prof Noctis over there. Uh, make sure you check out my YouTube channel. Uh, currently, I've got um, playthroughs of this game that are going uh, uploaded immediately afterwards, as well as um, maybe my biggest video, which is What is Final Fantasy? If you haven't seen that, make sure you check that out. And uh, coming soon, knock on wood, is... Um, what is uh, uh, what makes a good side quest? So there's a te teaser for you. I am 75% done with that video, and hopefully it'll be out next week. But Texas game, um, horns down, baby. Um, Roll Tide uh, is this weekend, so there's that. Our religion's always been a big part of FF lore. FF16 is full of religious parallels for sure. Uh, Runor, I feel like what you're doing is definitely something the writers of the game thought of as well. I, I think it seems that way. Um, we'll, we'll see. Trying to find a Shadow Sid. We're going to talk about Shadow Sid. Recklessness. Is it possible to overprovide? Um, and then maybe some of that as well. So who knows? We're going to get into it. Um, I, I feel like I need to get some branded notebooks, right, um, and, and send them out to you guys. Uh, so I may work on that a little bit this uh, this weekend so that we can all kind of um, write down some things. So uh, we're not here for entertainment. This is the class of the Final Fantasy Professor. We're here for some school. and we'll, Hopefully you learned something, but hopefully we have a good time too. You know, um, I, that, that's what we're about. Um, I'm completely on board. I've struggled with religious trauma, taken to psychology, but felt like something was missing. This story was the thread that brought the muthos to my logos. Hey, Alexander, can I tell you something? Like, um, there, there's a lot that you and I uh, probably share in that. Uh, you know, I, I have been a part of the best of religion, and I've also been part of the worst. And um, I've experienced both sides of that. Uh, and I, I think that to some degree, I also deal with some religious trauma um, that, that I have to reckon with. Um, for me, it ended up with coping through three different degrees. And uh, while I'm still a religious person, um, a, a man of faith, um, what I try to do is present religiosity and religion in a way that makes people better. Um, I try to do this with my students. I try, try to live that with myself. And um, so, you know, you're not going to get a lot of, quote, preaching from me, but um, hopefully, um, uh, who was it? Richard Dawkins, one times, was that uh, this renowned atheist, if you've never heard of him, um, though probably you've, you've heard of him. He was asked one time, um, you always point at the worst of religion, and you point at people like, um, you know, uh, Westboro Baptist and, and places like that, but what about the best of religion? People like Dietrich Bonhoeffer or... Um, you know, Karl Barth or um, other theologians and, you know, 
why do you always point to the worst? And Richard Dawkins said something really interesting, uh, anti-religion, anti-God sort of thing, and a uh, renowned atheist. He said, if only all religion were part of that nuanced sort of thinking, it would, the wor it would make the world a better place. But the majority of religion are these almost crusader types. Um, to me, that resonated in my soul um, deeply. And to me, I was like, I want to convey that kind of nuanced religion that's practical, that's relevant, but also helps people not just depend on thoughts and prayers, but actually create, co-create a better world. Um, so that's, that's a little bit more than you asked for from me, but that's, that's a little bit of a personal um, reason for why I would do streams like this. I think there is good in, in religiosity, um, but it does mean that we bring out um, and, and peel away some of the things that have been traumatic for so many of us. Alexander, thank you for sharing that. that that's great. Um, Ooh, man, that's sorry, I went down that rabbit hole. Uh, <laughs> a lot of stuff mentioned here sometimes goes over your head. Hey, Runar, let me, let me tell you something. If you ever have a question about stuff, feel free to put it in chat because sometimes I get in professor mode and I don't want to leave anybody behind. So just say, hey, can you better explain that? Uh, I, I'd love for us all to, to uh, be able to engage. So there's that. Um, and then finally, but I like the opportunity to learn new stuff. Went into a Gnosticism rabbit hole after beating this game. Yeah, that, a lot of Gnostic stuff, and we'll certainly talk about that in a few streams. Claymore, sorry, what was the god referred to uh, when talking about Ramu's provision? There's a number, a uh, number of them. Uh, two that we really talked about: the Hindu god Indra, um, who defeated Vritra, um, who was a threat to prosperity and happiness. And then finally, um, number two, we talked about uh, Yahweh in the Old Testament combined with Baal and um, how the Israelites besieged both of them as a god of storms um, that would bring rain and fertility to their harvest. And so we see this embodied in Sid slash Ramu, the god of storms. Now, there's other parallels that we can uh, go into as well, but um, Ramu, the god of provision, uh, embodied in the storms, those are, are really good parallels, I think. Uh, Hi, Wind, I, I really wish the religious people in my life were more like you. Yeah, I got almost exclusively the worst parts of it growing up, and it drove you away, but you seem like you do good for everyone, and that's wonderful. Hey, we're just trying to do the best we can with what we got, you know? And these stories, I think, um, uh, in my context, the Judeo-Christian uh, stories and mythologies, but also I hope that you hear in me an appreciation for uh, Hindu stories, for um, Islam stories, uh, for Norse and Greek stories. These stories are formative. We're, boy, we're going to talk about that. I can't talk about it now without spoilers. But um, anyway, hey, this has been a blast, you guys. I hope that you're enjoying this. I, I know that I am. Um, but uh, I hope you have a great weekend. Look for me. I, no promises, but look for me in a sign on college game day. I'm going to try to uh, shout out uh, Prof Noctis and maybe Final Fantasy 16. I, I kind of got bigger on Twitter when I held up a sign at WrestleMania that said um, Final Fantasy 15 is overrated. And so now maybe I can do that at the Alabama-Texas game day. So if you are uh, interested in football or not, uh, look, at, look up ESPN game day. It's going to be in Tuscaloosa, Alabama this Saturday, and hopefully I'll be front and center with my sign. Uh, but anyway, also catch the tide. i got to support them. Roll tide, baby. Uh, with that, everybody, I hope you have a freaking awesome weekend. Whatever you do, be safe and be good to each other. And uh, thanks for hanging out. Walk tall, my friends. Y'all have a great night. Bye, y'all.